So I hope clicking on that title got you guys excited because today we're going to be making our own surface grinding attachment for a 2x72 belt sander. So these have become very popular. Uh, the design was originated I think by Travis Wurritz at uh, TW90 Grinders. Um, his are pretty expensive though and I didn't want to lay out that kind of money. So today we're going to make our own. Uh, there is a large thread at bladeforms.com of other guys out there making their own surface grinding attachments for their belt sanders. And I learned a ton by looking at their designs and looking at their builds. So I learned a lot from there. I'll put a link to that thread in the description below so that you can go and read up on the pages and pages of users making their own surface grinding attachments. Uh, special thanks to Stromberg Knives because he not only uh, had an awesome drawings of his surface grinding attachment, but he also had great pictures and our email correspondence really helped out with my build. So major thanks to him. So today we're going to be building one. Uh, I'll go over first all of the items and pieces that I purchased and where I got them from. I'll be putting a whole parts list and links and stuff below. Uh, the Amazon links are affiliates, but there are going to be a lot of links that are from other places because not all these items can be found on Amazon. Uh, one of the major ones is AliExpress. Now, this is like a direct import company. So when you order something on AliExpress, it's generally coming directly from China. So you can expect ship times of like 20 plus days. So it took a while to get some of these parts in. You can get some of those same parts on Amazon, but they're two or three times more expensive. So I'll give you the options down below on how much uh, your wait time is worth. But the first thing we'll do is we'll go through all the parts and then we'll get on with the build. First of all, we have the table here or the slide table. Uh, this thing will be used to move our magnetic chuck and assembly further or closer to the grinding wheel. So you can see by turning that screw there, uh, you can move it back and forth in a very controlled manner. The second item is the slider. Uh, this has a set of five bearings, roller bearings there, and two guide rods in the, uh, the long portion. And they ride upon each other so that you have a very nice, tight, controlled sliding mechanism. Uh, here's a close-up of the bearings. We are going to have to modify this plate so that we can attach it to the table. The slider is about 600 millimeters long and about two and a quarter wide. Here is our contact wheel. Uh, this is a serrated wheel to help with the heat. It is about three inches wide and it's 200 millimeters or about eight inches uh, in diameter. The bearings on this contact wheel will be 12.7 millimeters or one half of an inch. Uh, I selected the 12.7 millimeter option so that I can utilize a one half of an inch uh, diameter bolt. This bolt will be five inches long and I also bought an assortment of washers and a spacer as you see there so that I can space out the contact wheel from the tooling arm to around a half an inch or at least a half an inch is what I use. Your machine may differ. Next up is the aluminum that we use for this build. I ordered this from onlinemetals.com. Uh, these are two foot sections. This first bar is two inches by a half inch. The next bar is one and a half inches by five eighths of an inch. And then the last bar, this will be our magnetic chuck, is two and a half inches wide by one inch thick. Last bar that we're going to look at here is going to be our tooling arm which is one and a half by one and a half inches square. Next up will be the hardware. I spent about two hours at Ace Hardware making sure I had the right pieces uh, so I didn't have to go back. I overbought so this list here will be modified and I will show you that modified list at the end of the video. I also had to modify the lengths of many of these pieces of hardware. Uh, so I made sure to buy long so I can grind them down. I stuck with mostly quarter 20 for this build. However, the only oddball size were these M6 uh, fasteners up here in the top right. These are gonna be threaded into the table and the table does accept M6. This is a 7 16 of an inch end mill that I'll be using to mill out the slots in my magnetic chuck. Uh, if I was doing this again, I would have purchased a two or three flute roughing mill, and that would have made the process easier. 
for aluminum that is. These are the magnets. They're 60 by 10 by 5 millimeters. Uh, I bought 20 of them off of Amazon and they are very strong so be careful when handling these magnets. These are two handles that will be utilized on the surface grinding attachment. I bought these off of Amazon as well and I bought them long so that I can shave them down to my required lengths. So we're going to go ahead and get started by cutting out these pieces of aluminum. Uh, that large piece there is going to be my magnetic chuck. We're going to make that one 15 and 1 8 of an inch long. And then the other two pieces, the half inch piece and the 5 8 piece, will make 16 and a half. So you can see that we're uh, cutting them here on a Bauer bandsaw and swag stand. Uh, this takes a little bit of time, so just take your time, feed it slowly, and you'll get through it. So after we get these pieces cut out, we're going to go over to the belt sander and just clean up the ends so that we don't cut ourselves uh, on the burrs while working with these pieces for the rest of the project. So these bolts, these uh, quarter by 20 bolts, will be utilized to attach this 5 8 piece to the magnetic chuck. So this will be the piece that holds the magnetic chuck to the assembly with these three bolts. So we're going to go ahead and drill a quarter inch holes here, three of them, three quarter inch holes, all the way through this piece, and then we'll eventually tap the magnetic chuck to accept those bolts. On the flats of this piece, we're going to put some holes to accept those handles that I showed earlier. Uh, one side will have a 3 8 hole, since they're 3 8 by 16. And then the other side, we're going to go ahead and put a 7 16 hole, uh, so that we have a little bit of space in that hole for pivoting this arm. So that makes sense in a little bit when this thing comes together. Uh, but we'll eventually be able to pivot this magnetic chuck so that we can taper tangs. So what you see me doing here is passing these holes through to the half inch piece because we'll eventually have to drill that half inch piece to accept a 3 8 by 16 thread for the handles. After we get the, uh, the holes marked through here we're going to go ahead back to the mini mill and take that 5 8 piece and uh, mill out a slot so that it can pivot on the 7 16 side. You can see here that I'm marking these pieces top and right, so T and R. Uh, that's just so I can keep everything in line while I am uh, working this project. So we're taking a 7 16 end mill here and we're going to mill out a slot to connect up with this hole. Uh, like I said earlier, the point of this is so that this piece will be able to pivot. So just as a caveat, I don't know what I'm doing when it comes to milling. Uh, I learned a lot during this project, as you'll see later on, and uh, so the early time milling you see in this project, don't judge me too hard on. So this is what that piece looks like uh, when we're finished up with it. We have a slot on one side, a hole on the other side to pivot on, and then we have three holes going through the piece that will attach to the magnetic chuck. So. These are where the holes are going to go in, and then this piece will, will move, uh, as you can tell now, with that slot. So we're going to go ahead and tap this bottom piece with 3 8 by 16 thread. So we start off with a pilot hole, and then we drill uh, up to the size required for the tap. Which I can't remember exactly what that size is, but it is written on the tap. And then using the drill press, or using the mini mill, we'll get that tap started um, by hand so that it's nice and straight in this bottom half inch piece. You'll see me doing that operation a lot during this project. Uh, it's just a really good way to make sure that your threads are going straight through the piece. However, make sure you turn your mill off when you're doing that for safety. So this is what that assembly looks like together. You can see my handles are sticking out there. We're going to go ahead and cut those off. So we get the ends of these handles cut off and then we go over to the uh, belt sander and just clean them up a little bit 
so that they're uh, nice and uh, domed. So now that we have that piece finished, we'll go over to the magnetic chuck and we'll mark through with a quarter inch drill bit where we need to drill the holes into the magnetic chuck. So in this project, I'm lining up all three pieces on my right hand side. And the chuck will be centered uh, on the table that we show later on in the video. So after we get these nice holes marked, we'll go ahead and drill a number seven hole to accept a quarter 20 tap. Now, uh, I show it in the second hole. I'm actually only drilling down uh, about three quarters of an inch into this piece uh, because I, I didn't want to go all the way through. So about three quarters of an inch of thread on this magnetic chuck. Later on, when we are putting slots into this chuck to accept the magnets, I'll mark off where these bolts are. So just a test fit here. Uh, looks like it works great. They all tighten up just fine. And this is what uh, this assembly will look like before we mill the slots into the magnetic chuck. And then when you loosen up this one handle with the slot on the slot side, you can see that you can move this assembly and pivot it uh, to be able to do some tapered tangs down the road. All right, so this is the uh, slider or, or the, uh, yeah, I guess the slider piece that we'll be uh, attaching this whole assembly to. I went ahead and drilled out the three mounting holes here to a quarter of an inch since they were slightly smaller. And then notice that these cap head screws are a little too tall. They sit a little too proud to allow uh, these bearings to freely slide. So I chuck it up into my drill, go over to the belt sander, and then flatten the tops of these a little bit uh, so that that bearing assembly can slide freely uh, in that slider. As you can see here, I'm not having any issues now that I've taken down the width of those bolts. So we'll go ahead and get this thin place and we will mark through um, or lay out through with a drill bit onto this half inch piece. And then we will drill out uh, number seven holes and tap them quarter 20 thread. So this will attach that first assembly we just made to this, um, to this slider. And then these three eighths by 16 handles will attach uh, that five eighths piece onto the half inch piece. And then we'll attach a half inch piece to the slider with those three bolts that we just took down the height of the, uh, the caps on. All right, so here we are marking off where our bolts are on the magnetic chuck before we do any milling. I didn't want to mill over uh, the place where we put those threads in there. We're going to be utilizing uh, these little magnets here. Note that they are very strong, so be careful when you're using them so you don't pinch yourself. Uh, they're about 0.38, and we're going to be using a 7 16 end mill to make the slots, so that is plenty of room to get these little guys epoxied in there. Hey guys, if y'all are enjoying this video, do me a solid and hit that subscribe button down below. So I went ahead and started marking out the lines of where we'll be milling these slots. They are about uh, yeah, 7 sixteenths of an inch wide. And then in between them, I am making quarter inch slots or, or quarter inch ledges most of the way. When I get towards the middle, I have one or two on each side that will be 3 sixteenths. We're going to be using 20 total magnets uh, for this build. So don't judge me too hard here. I didn't know what I was doing and I didn't do an adequate amount of research online. So I was running this mill at about 2,500 RPMs and I was taking way too large of cuts here. And you can tell with my results how ratty it looks. Uh, so um, yeah, don't, don't do what I'm doing right here or you will probably tear up your equipment. Later on in the video, I will show you uh, the difference between this and a better 
uh, depth of cut, which ended up for me being around 40 thousandths and, uh, and way slower on my, on my movement of the table. So yeah, you can see what happened here. I blew a fuse, and now whenever I put the fuse into my machine and turn on, it shuts down the power for the garage. So at this point in the project, uh, we were in a little bit of trouble. Well, the mill broke, and I got about seven slots left to do. I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna get this done. I took the PC board out of the mill uh, or at least a circuit board so I can send it off for repair. I hope that fixes it. It may not. I may need to find someone local to help me out with these slots, but uh, we're going to move on to a different part of the project uh, while I figure this part out. All right, so what you see me doing here is I'm mocking up this assembly so that I can make sure that my magnetic chuck clears the apex of my wheel there. Uh, that's just a quick check I want to do to make sure everything's lining up. So I'll be using metric bolts in uh, connecting this bearing plate to the table. Uh, this bearing plate is threaded in M6 thread, so I wanna make sure to drill those out so that my bolts can pass through uh, e easily. I then countersink these holes to let the bolt head sit deep into this plate so that it will not contact the slider uh, as you see here. So we get them nice and deep so that we can slide this effortlessly. So NanoCAD came in on the clutch here. I uh, drew out 50 mil by 50 mil hole spacing. Uh, and it's the only way I figured that I can get this transferred uh, to the other side of this plate. I go ahead and put a piece of tape in the middle and then very carefully line up one set of holes with one side of this drawing. And then the other set of holes I'll be able to drill on the back side of this plate. Uh, this is the spacing required to attach this bearing plate to the slider table or to the black table there that you see there. So you can see I have one side lined up there. I'm going to go ahead and take a center punch and punch my other two holes in the back side of this bearing plate. I'll then drill these two holes uh, all the way through so that my M6 bolts can pass through uh, effortlessly. And then I will also countersink these holes so as the heads of the bolts does not contact the slider. So now these four holes line up with the mounting holes of the table. And I will go ahead and cut the M6 bolts uh, to around three quarters of an inch and then they will be able to attach the bearing plate to the sliding table. Note that by doing it this way I am slightly offset to one side however um, I still have an ample amount of clearance uh, on my magnetic chuck so this is not an issue. All right, so I got my board back in from Mr. Pete Brush. Uh, I'll put his information uh, on the screen here so that if you have any problems with uh, mini lathes or, or mini mill uh, PC boards, you can send them off to him and he'll get them repaired. I really hope this fixes my mill because uh, the mill is crucial for this project, mainly for the magnetic chuck. I have to mill the slots into the magnetic chuck so that I can insert the magnets but also for the ledge that I'll be putting into the tooling arm so that my sliding table uh, can have some relief into the tooling arm. So uh, I'll put his information up here. So if you have any problems with your mills, you can get them fixed. Uh, to be honest, I was pushing my mill too hard milling the slots. My RPMs were too high. My feed rates were too high. So lesson learned. Um, hopefully this fixes the problem. So yeah, major thanks to Pete. His turnaround time was extremely fast. I want to say it was almost within one week of me sending it, I got it back. So that's pretty awesome. When you're messing around with these mills, make sure you flag each one of these lines or these cables here uh, so that the little, uh, the little uh, markers don't, get, don't fall off and you don't lose your spot. Moment of truth here. The mill turned on and we're in good shape again. 
So we went ahead and got the mill reset up onto my workbench here, uh, just lined up with the holes I previously had. And then we started uh, more intelligently milling our slots here. So uh, I started using some, uh, some cutting fluid as well as only taking about 40 thousandths of an inch deep bites and moving about 64 thousandths a second on my table travel there. Uh, so this ended up working way better for me. The mill was obviously in a happier uh, condition <laughs> as I was using it. You can tell while you're milling if it's, uh, if it's happy or not. So we got those uh, holes, I mean those slots milled there and then we went ahead with a hand file and cleaned up these corners just so that we don't uh, cut ourselves when we're messing with this thing. My older slots uh, uh, definitely have a lot more roughness on the sides of the channel, uh, but I got as good as I can get with a the file there and as good as I feel like I needed to. Then we're going to prep this thing up for doing our glue up. Uh, so I went ahead and take this prep all, or you can use alcohol, clean up these slots so that it will accept the uh, two-part epoxy here. So I started off by using some of my uh, remaining BSI epoxy and then I moved on to JFlex uh, for the rest of the slots down the road. I ended up uh, having a couple problems with the BSI stuff because it was taking me so long to get these little guys in there that some of it started setting a little too soon for me. So um, I went ahead and replaced those with GFlex. So when you're doing this, make sure you're being very careful and holding down the magnet uh, adjacent to the one you're inserting uh, because they definitely want to uh, be friends. No! And it's not fun trying to get them apart when they're all epoxied up together and slippery and whatnot. So uh, it happened to me a couple times while doing this, but I found that if you hold down the previous magnet and then get a really good grip on the new one, and get it into that slot immediately, uh, you'll be in good shape. They will pull up against each other, but that's fine as long as they're still in the slots. So also note that this takes uh, longer than you think it will. <laughs> so I was in there for a while uh, getting all these little guys in there. But this is what it looks like after I had them all epoxied in there. A uh, little messy, but that's just the nature of this job. Uh, I went ahead and brought this magnetic chuck inside into the nice climate controlled environment so that it can dry uh, quickly. So I'm going to be milling a slot into my tooling arm to accept the table. I'm going to go into it uh, 0.46 inches into it and it's going to be 4.58 long and then the hole I'm putting in my tooling arm uh, for the wheel will be about 8.8 .8 inches into the tooling arm. So to knock out most of the material, I bandsaw cut uh, this slot here and then I went back to the mill and uh, took a half inch uh, end mill and just cleaned that up a little bit. So yeah, I'm taking about uh, half a width of the mill cuts there and uh, it's, not, it's not a very deep cut, so uh, it didn't take that long to get this nice and cleaned up. So I want to note that I actually uh, tried a different method of drilling the hole for my contact wheel in this tooling arm uh, when I did not have access to my mill. And I drilled the hole all the way through uh, to one half of an inch uh, so that I thought that I would be able to thread that bolt through that hole um, and just tighten it up really tight and I wouldn't have any issues. However, you can kind of see here, uh, that hole is not perfectly half of an inch and neither is the bolt. So I had a lot of wobble on that side of my tooling arm. So I found the better method is to go ahead and uh, drill an undersized hole and then tap it to half inch by 13 threads and then screw in that axle uh, into uh, the tooling arm and it was way tighter of a fit. But also note that I have about a half inch I need to relieve this tooling arm uh, because my threads on that axle bolt are not long enough. So that's what I'm doing here. I relieved it. I went ahead, put that half inch bolt in there. I had a nice little spacer that I bought with a washer and then uh, screwed this axle into the tooling arm, get it nice and tight. And then I can eventually put a nylock nut on the back end of that bolt. So it's going to be in there and it's, uh, it's never going to come out. Also, there's no wobble 
uh, in this wheel anymore with that type of assembly method. Do note that there are two operations in this method, uh, the tapping being the second one, so you just need to really take your time and make sure you're getting it tapped in there nice and straight. So now we're going to move on to the table uh, and attaching this table to the tooling arm. Uh, I kind of eyed these. They don't need to be super precise. I just went ahead and eyed two holes here. I'm drilling quarter inch holes and then I'll come back eventually and counterbore those holes uh, so that the bolt heads will sit deep into, these, uh, into this table. I'll be using uh, quarter 20 uh, bolts to attach this table into my tooling arm. So I have four spots there. I'm gonna go ahead and transfer uh, these holes or this hole placement onto my tooling arm. So I get it mocked up on there and clamped. And I take a square and make sure it's square with the tooling arm. And then I use a quarter inch uh, drill bit to go ahead and start the divots for these four holes. And then I head back over to the mini mill with a number seven bit drill through all four of these with number sevens and then tap them uh, to quarter 20 using the same technique that I've used throughout the video so that you get nice and straight holes. Now note my tap was not quite long enough to go all the way through uh, this tooling arm so I ended up uh, cutting down my bolts a little bit uh, to I think yeah around 1.2 inches so that uh, they just stop short of where my threads are. Uh, this next piece here, we're going to go ahead and put a stop nut or, a, or just a, a nut here so that the uh, pivot arm will stop mechanically in the quote unquote zeroed position. So we're going to go ahead and drill and tap this half inch plate to quarter 20 for that little stop nut. Uh, the nice thing about this stop nut is you will also be able to use shims on this nut for specific tapering angles. So as I mentioned earlier in the video, I bought long and I overbought just to make sure I had the hardware I needed. Um, but you can see the adjustments I made in red to the sheet. This is how my hardware landed at the end of the project. So take note here. And then we're gonna drill some uh, holes and tap them on the edges of our sliding bar here. Uh, these will be uh, stops so that the entire assembly doesn't come sliding off the bearings. Okay, so here's the final assembly here. I went ahead and used some blue off-brand Loctite to uh, get everything nice and tight in this assembly. Um, you can see me putting in the, uh, the bolts to attack, attach the slider arm to this half-inch plate. I go ahead and I put in this stop nut here, stop, stop bolt. And then you can see us putting in the uh, pivot arm I did not lock tight these handles because uh, I feel like they are going to want to be moved um, frequently. And now we're going to attach the bearing plate to the sliding table and then attach that whole assembly uh, to the tooling arm. So this is what that looks like when it's attached. Uh, I use four bolts there to attach it to a tooling arm. I guess you probably could use three if you wanted to. but I just went ahead and used all four. I also didn't use Loctite on this axle. I figured it was tight enough with the with the backing nylock. All right, so I lay down a piece of wood since I'll be dealing with this magnetic chuck. Uh, this thing's kind of dangerous uh, now that it's all together because it's just so strong of a magnet. Uh, so I go ahead and I attach the magnetic chuck to the entire assembly. Uh, with these three quarter 20 bolts and this is what that looks like all right now we're going to get the tooling arm put in to the belt sander i'm just throwing on a two inch uh, ceramic belt here and then we're trying to slide this guy on there and then i noticed that something's hanging it up and then i find out that the culprit is the heads of these bolts here attaching the bearings to the table. So we go ahead and with a die grinder just knock down those corners and now it goes on uh, effortlessly. So on these uh, stop bolts uh, I didn't like how the threads were impacting the bearings 
So I went ahead and took a chunk of horse stall mat here and drilled a uh, number seven hole through the center of it. And then we'll just, uh, we'll just thread that up on the end of our stops so that we have a nice rubber piece contacting our bearing, uh, our bearing plate. So I also did this on the, uh, the bottom end as well. So the first thing I did was I went ahead and I started uh, taking a little bit of aluminum off the top of this chuck. And you can see that I am tracking the belt left and right uh, as I go. Since my belt is smaller than the width of the chuck, uh, this would uh, be a case for getting a three inch belt uh, custom made for this, but uh, right now I only have two inches. So I feel like I got the chuck nice and square. I then uh, did some test pieces here. I took just a piece of steel and uh, I started threading. I noticed that threading it in just a little bit uh, at a time uh, really helps, but you can see here that you can kind of get a workout doing this too. And then these are the results I had with my little test piece. So I'm looking forward to uh, using this thing in the future and really getting it dialed in. So as far as this build goes, uh, mechanically, it is complete. Note that there will be some learning curves involved with using this surface grinding attachment. Uh, and most notably, probably your feed rates on this table. You want to feed in probably around one to five thousandth uh, at a run. Uh, if you go any more than that, you'll probably get some dishing or warping or even like a bad uh, finish. So uh, feed in just a little bit at a time and then probably move this back and forth until you are no longer seeing sparks. When it comes to measuring your results, you saw that I use a pair of digital calipers. These probably are not uh, accurate enough to really give you an idea of how you're doing. I've ordered a cheap set of uh, micrometers so that I can get a better idea of, of this machine's performance. My target with this machine is about a thousandth of an inch over the, uh, my entire workpiece. Uh, so I feel like that's pretty good for fixed blade knives. Uh, I'm thinking for folders you may need a little bit higher level of precision, but uh, you're probably not going to get that with, with this. Um, other than that, i probably order some 3 inch belts. I think uh, Phoenix ab abrasives will make custom belts. I'm not sure about that, but I'll, I want to get some 3 inch belts here uh, so that I can have an option for wider work pieces. And then I think I'll go back and refinish or, or re-true uh, up my, my magnetic chuck with a 3 inch belt just to, just to make sure that's perfectly true. Also, if you're going to be uh, flattening anything that has a warp in it, you may need to put some shims under that warp um, so that the magnets won't pull that warp out uh, while you're making it flat and then when you take it off you still have the warp there. So there are going to be some learning curves like that with this machine that uh, you may need to work on. You will see me working through that in the next couple videos that I use this machine on uh, my knives going forward. So all the knife builds I'll be putting out in the future, I'm going to be working through those kinks with this machine. So if you want to see that, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below and uh, go ahead and follow along. And with that, I hope you all really enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button and I'll catch all y'all on the flip side. <music>